All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and it, guys, it has been a, a busy off season. And if I'm if I'm honestly assessing the situation, uh, we have I mean it's not been great. I have uh, had to let go. I say I had to. I let go of a lot of players that were really hard to let go of, and that's partly because of my my soccernomics transfer policy where I try to sell players as soon as offers come in that meet their value so going back real quick to look at the transfer history as you can see a lot of moves here first of all let's look back so at the end of December after the uh, Copa Sudamericana final which was the last video we did I went to my academy and I signed a bunch of guys who uh, were about to be released. What happens is with the academies, if you're familiar with the MLS in uh, Football Manager, when a player hits 18, they're automatically released from the academy. And so these were guys who were all going to be released. And what I do, I, I sign most of them. If there's guys that are turning 18 that I know, I'm pretty sure are not going to be any good, then what I do is I, do, I don't sign those. But everybody else I sign because I figure I'm at least going to give them a chance. I can send them to Nashville too and see how well they do there. And then, uh, you know, if they if they are obviously not going to pan out, then I let them go. But I'm, I'm not paying them very much money. So it's, I always just, I sign a bunch of guys just to see, you know, because sometimes your academy will produce some good players. So, uh, so that happened. Then, of course, we had the draft. I signed several guys. Uh, off. Uh, first of all, well, I did get one, um, what you call a Generation Adidas player. Now, this is somebody who is a, I think that, I might have got a couple. They You sign them and they don't count against your cap. So Peter Ebert was one. I ended up, uh, he, is, he is my starting center back and that's because I had to let go of a couple center backs. We'll look at we'll look at the guys I let go of in a moment. I mean, you can see him right there, and you might recognize some of them. Uh, Dean Ramos is a guy I sent off to on loan. No, he's with Nashville too. Um, Michael Warren will he will be with the first team this year. He's not a GA. Um, Podrini is a guy I signed at striker. He's with Nashville too. I mean, we could go down the whole list. Most of these guys, like here's Peter Doyle. This is a player that I'm, I'm kind of excited about, but he is uh, with, I sent him off on loan to the Cosmos. And I mean, I as always, I had ended up with like 10 or 11 draft picks. Then there were a couple of Generation Adidas players. I, I, I follow the Generation Adidas, what happens to the Generation Adidas players because these are guys that you can sign. You, they, uh, they sign senior contracts but they don't count against the salary cap. So occasionally, though, they'll refuse to sign for the team that drafts them. And that was true of two other players, and you'll see those guys down here. Andy Cruz is another center back, and he is probably going to start. He'll be a starting center back for me. He is a GA, but because uh, he did not want to sign. I forget who drafted him, but he did not want to sign with them. So I, it, what you have to do, you have to negotiate a trade. So I gave, I mean, it was almost nothing. I gave a very little allocation money. I bought his rights and then negotiated a contract and he signed with me. Uh, then another was a goalkeeper, Henry Rangel, who he really, he steps in and he's ready to compete for the starting job right now. Now that that's really only because the goalkeeper that I have is uh, only 19. So I feel like he is going to develop He's got a higher ceiling than Henry Rangel, so he'll probably end up long term being the starting keeper. But this year, Rangel gives me you know a backup option uh, in case of an injury to Vargas. I have Rangel here that I can slide in and feel comfortable. And who knows, maybe in the future Rangel starts. Right? Maybe I sell Vargas and Rangel becomes the guy. Maybe I trade Rangel, but he was uh, he was a good pickup. Um, and then you ha I had some free transfers here. These are foreign players. So here, here's one thing that really kind of is, is a frustrating part for me. So I, I, I sold or traded away some very good players. Um, and I, replacing them was a struggle because all three of my designated player slots are occupied. And they're occupied by youth designated players. You cannot buy down a youth DP contract. If it was a senior contract, which I think the cutoff age is 24, maybe 23, 
but when a player when a designated player is over 23 you can use targeted allocation money targeted monopoly money and pay down his uh his dp contract to where it's just a senior contract that means that theoretically you could have up to if you had only senior dps you could have up to six designated player contracts but I right now only have three youth DP contracts. You can't pay any of those down. So to get the really good players, I have to go in and spend a lot of money on the transfer fee. The problem is, is that when you that transfer fee money counts towards the salary cap, and so you when you when you pay such a high fee, like let's say you go pay fifteen million dollars for a player, then that fifteen million dollars counts a part of it not all of it but part of it counts against the salary cap and there's no way to make that to buy that down to a senior contract so i could not sign any high quality players because i, I had a full slate of dps and that becomes frustrating I, a lot of you guys have probably experienced that at fm i try i tried to sign a couple of guys but they didn't go through because i couldn't get there i could not uh sign them to a senior contract because their their transfer fee pushed the value up too high, their cap impact was too high. They had to be DPS, and so so I had to settle. So what did I do? Well, I I went to free transfers is the only thing I could do. I found some guys who are okay. They're definitely not at the quality of the players that I lost, but hopefully they'll develop. First one was Gatot Herdiana. He's another Indonesian player. I have an Indonesian connection right now because one of my center backs is Indonesian. He actually played with Indonesia in uh, the Asian Cup. There's some Asian Cup that he participated in over the winter. Uh, Abdul Drama. But this is uh, Herdiana, and I'm sure I'm, I'm, I'm butchering the pronunciation. But he is a, right now, I think I might be training him. No, I, he may be just training him as a right winger. No, I'm training him on the left because he, he prefers the right. Oh, sorry, I'm terrible with the clicks. Uh, he prefers the right foot, so I like my right-footed players to play on the left. Whatever, he is. Um, you know, I'm hopeful he's not. Got, he doesn't have great potential ability, but I'm hoping to kind of get him, develop him enough to where I can then sell him on or trade him, make you know, make an asset out of him. Uh, I mean, the reality is he he's not. He doesn't stand out in any any real area except for two pace. He's very fast. He's got a 17 pace, 16 acceleration, and his determination is high, which sounds good. But then you look at his, his work rate, and it's only an eight, so that that hurts. <laughs> um, so who knows? Hopefully, I can get him get those attributes up to where he's he's a little more serviceable. But he does have good pace, so every once in a while, you know that that will help. You know he'll be he'll he'll his pace will help him to make a big play. Um, Fabricio Oya. This is a guy who's versatile. The, re the reason I signed him, that I mean, that's why. Uh, he's a versatile player. He can play. In, he can play the ten. He can play the nine. Uh, or I could, if I had to, slide him out into the one of the wings. Um, but right now I'm way covered in wings, so I don't really need wingers. But he um, he's a decent again, you know, lower work rate. Um, but he does have a 15 in determination. That was one area I, I demanded to get a good determination out of these guys, even though I wasn't going to be able to get what I really wanted. Uh, I, I, that was something I at least wanted was determination. And he, uh, my scouts say he does have a four star potential ability. So that's you know that's somewhat encouraging. Uh, Philip Oaks, this guy is, he is really a Swiss Army knife. I can play him in a lot of different places, anywhere on the left. He can play left back, left wing back, left winger. Uh, I can put him up and play him at the nine, at striker. I can even put him at right wing if I needed to. So he, he, he's a guy who plays a lot of different positions. Again, 15 determination. Uh, he does have a good work rate at 14, and his teamwork is 14. So he's, he's a... He's a team player, is I guess a good way to look at it. And again, I can put him in a lot of different places. Um, some of his his attributes are not where I would like them to be, though. You look at like his passing is ten. Uh, playing if I did play him in the back, his positioning is only a six. So you know decisions are a nine. So he's not a great option, but he's somebody. You know, he's played in the Bundesliga with Hanover. So. Um, he was free. I figured I'd, I'd sign him up, see how well he does, and then maybe end up shipping him back to Germany. And then Gottfried, uh, Gottfried Donza. I don't, not familiar, don't know him, uh, but apparently he's played in Italy. He was sitting out there as a free transfer. 
Uh, he play he can play six or eight. He's a little more of an eight than he is a six, but he does have good strength, so that that's good and, and decent balance. So I, I can play him at the six if I needed to, but he definitely is a little more of an eight, um, although not a great one. <laughs> just been full disclosure. Uh, again, I'm trying to. I was really just trying to fill some holes. I have 16 international spots, and I wanted to use them. Um, I also went and brought in uh, another winger, Liam Miller. This is a Canadian. Uh, he's, he play, He apparently was with Liverpool for a while. Don't know anything about his time with Liverpool. Probably, well, I guess we can go look real quick. Um, I figure I've never heard of him. Yeah, so he, he, he I don't, looks like he never even set foot he, on the field for Liverpool. Uh, he they he was loaned out to Kilm, uh, Kilmarnock uh, in 2018 2019 so he played a little bit there but I, I brought him in um, again to kind of fill a need at wing and you know he does have some hope of becoming a decent player and again 15 determination good pace 17 acceleration is 16 uh, his teamwork is a 10 and he's got an 11 finishing so he he's a he can play on the wing. I think I'm trying to even play on the right though, because uh, he no, I am putting him on the left. He's right footed. So, so those are the guys that I brought in. I know this is a long. This might turn into a, like a 20, 25 minute video. Uh, one player I was able to bring in because I lost Roberto. Roberto was a uh, a designated player I had that I didn't I didn't move until January, but I brought in this guy Ab uh, Abakar Galkin at DP. Uh, he's young. He's only 18. He's Russian. Brought him in from Kran, uh, Krasnodar. Krasnodar. <laughs> and apparently he never actually had played for them yet. My scouts assured me that he was a good choice. He is up. To, he could rise to a five-star potential. Um, but he's got good determination. That was one of the things that I definitely looked at that turned me on to him. And uh, where's his personality? It's over here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so he's a re has a resolute personality, and that's one of the personalities that I, I don't mind signing because they, they tend to develop a little better. He can play at the nine, but probably he's going to end up playing um, right wing pretty exclusively, and he kind of steps in as a starter. So those are the guys I brought in. Now let's briefly look at the guys that I had to let go of. Um these two guys you never know so we won't look at them joel mcdonald was a, a 10 type player that i i had let go of he went and got drafted in the waiver draft garusian y'all knew about he signed with fc porto at the beginning of the year mamute ended up going to monaco i uh, definitely didn't like losing mamute uh, he's a very good player can play at the 10 he played at the 10 for me probably he, he'll end up playing on the left or maybe even at the uh, at the attacking mid number 10 for Monaco. Let's see if he's even if he's playing yet. I'm curious now. I need to know. Um yeah, he's playing at the attacking mid number 10 for Monaco. Uh, so, yeah, he's he you know, stepped right into their team and became an important player. He's made 12 starts apparently. So, um yeah, that was a tough loss. I definitely did not like losing the mute, but I think it was ready for Tim Gross was ready, and I brought in Fabricio Oya to, to, to fill that number 10 spot for me. Um, then I uh, lost, talked about Roberto. He went to Frankfurt. So those are some, those were, that right there are, are were three very important pieces to my team. Uh, Garugian on the wing, Mamute at the number 10, and Roberto played at, uh, in, at center back. So, but you look at the money, these, and Roberto, the $11 million Roberto sale was the club record. So, and it paid for, easily paid for what I brought in, right? I only spent $6.75 million and made 30, what is that, 30, 27, I guess. So that's, and I, that, those, the Mamute deal could rise all the way up to almost 10. So, so, you know, still making money on the transfer side of things. And also good news, uh, the club has continued to uh, improve the facilities. As you look, uh, we are currently improving both the training facilities, which will be finished in July. And then I'm also working on improving the data analysis facilities, which should wrap up in March, so about a week. So those are, um, yeah, we're... we're we're improving we're with the club I, I can't imagine i knew it would take about f five years to max out the club's facilities and all that but i feel like we're really close there 
I think these are the la these are the last improvements that have to be made. I'm pretty sure because you I, it can't now I can only decrease the junior budget. I don't think it gets any higher than that. Um, yeah, I can only cut back youth recruitment. So I, in the training facility, this is my third. It's the third or fourth uh, improvement at the training facility. So surely, surely, <laughs> they, this is gonna max those out. Um, so. That's kind of how things have gone for the in the offseason. Looking at the results, uh, preseason results have gone well. Um, did have you know we, we went we did the visit Tucson Cup. That's our preseason friendly competition, and we won it. Um, we'll look real quick at the group stage. We uh, beat uh, Chicago and San Antonio in the group stage. We drew Phoenix, and we had to score late to do it. So that was a little frustrating that result, but it is what it is. Uh, then in the championship we played Atlanta United, who we just can't seem to get away from. But we got a one to nothing win to win that. That's not a big deal. Nobody really cares about that. It's just a friendly cup, get a chance to get the guys some competitive action. Then we moved into the Concacaf Champions League against Alajuelense, and we went down to Costa Rica and won one to nothing at uh, at their stadium. Uh, had to play mostly my second team, but we got it done. Then we came home in the second leg and beat them two to nothing on goals from Herdiana and Brahmi. So those were good results. And then we went, we went to the Recopa Sudamericana because we won the Copa Sudamericana last year. You play the Recopa, which is like the Super Cup. We, uh, we lost at Minero uh, two to one because of two late goals. We scored at the 71st and then they really piled it on. They went very attacking, and we could not. They were, you know, they, they were coming hard, and we just could not deal with that. So they scored two goals to go up two to one. And then we came and played them in the home leg, and we could not score. Uh, Don Lottie, Don Lottie missed a penalty in the 25th. He didn't even put it on target. It was, it was wide. And uh, they even had a guy sent off. Allen committed a penalty in the box to give us the penalty. We missed it, and even though we piled on, we peppered their goal, we could not find the equalizer. So Atletico Minero won the Recopa Sudamericana. We failed to hold that cup, and so that's where we stand. That's where we are right now. Today, we will be taking on Cincinnati. So FC Cincinnati last year actually made the playoffs. They were the last team in. They got put out in the first round by Atlanta United, but they have a they've got a decent team. They're not somebody to be taken lightly. They do have for one one of the if you're if you follow the U.S. men's national team at all, you would probably recognize Sebastian uh, Legette. Let's see, Sebastian. He is a the winger. Yeah, so he plays on the left wing. Right now, he's only at two and a half stars. He is getting older. Another big player they have, but is injured, is Aurelian Tushimani. I'm I'm sure I butchered that. Butchered that. Uh, but he is he is probably their best player. But again, he may not even play today. He's he's supposed to not return to full training for another three days. But he's the orange injured, which means they could put him out there. Uh, I am having to put on put out a team that is a little weakened. I just to kind of tell you my my long-term plan for this year i i am going to focus on the league i want I, my first team is going to play in mls matches cups will be for the second team i i need to this is a rebuilding year uh, to be honest my squad quality overall has dropped most of these guys i feel can develop and become a as good or better of a team than i had last season but right now we're not there, and so I need to focus on league play. Uh, that's what I. The league play is the catalyst for everything else. If I want to get to the Champions League next season, I have to do well in the league. So I'm going to, for the most part, focus on the league. The exception is I am going to try to win the Champions League. Uh, however, Open Cup and any other cup competitions that I I compete in. Those will be played by mostly second team uh, players so that the first team can be fresh and healthy, ready to go for league matches. But because I just played, it was really kind of the way things worked out um, with the schedule, fixture congestion a little bit. I played three matches in a week. Uh, 
February 25th, Saturday, I played Alajuelense. Then I played the Recopa Sudamericana, the two legs, on Monday and then on Wednesday. So with all that tight fixture compaction, I, I'm left with sort of a, a fatigued squad overall. So I'm playing a, it's kind of a mishmash team. Uh, I hoped it for it to still be competitive enough to win, but I guess we'll see. All right, so here we go. Uh, as you can see, Cincinnati coming out in a 4-2-3-1. We are in our tried and true 4-3-3. Uh, they're actually dropping Legette into the uh, defensive midfield position. Um, so hopefully Cincinnati having to deal with injuries and so on, their own issues, uh, that'll help us. But uh, we are definitely not fielding the team that we wanted to. And so here we go. Kickoff of the 2023 MLS season. And Galkin gets fouled, fouled right outside the area. But his cross goes to nowhere. And we have an attack build up in the back. Tell you what, let's do. Let's try. Let's go director mode for today. This will be something for you guys. So you can watch it like it's a TV match. Uh, Cincinnati trying to work the ball in. There's a good pass out to Garza. And this is going a little too fast. Cincinnati with a throw in here. Uh, we win it, but then we play it right into zone 14. You can't do that. Cross in is headed out. They still have it, though. Garza's shot is wide. We have a free kick here. Oya puts it in. Far post. Can't get there. Cincinnati heads it out. Jolly comes and scoops it up. There's Warren. He plays it to Chan. We try to got to reorganize here, guys. To Ebert. Ah, Ebert gives the gives the ball away and a freaking easy goal by Garza. That is uh, you know, they they really FM SI saw that happen in a match. And I swear this happens just way too often. Garza took it off a bear's feet. A bear, of course, rookie. Man, that's a rookie mistake, I guess. And Cincinnati with another build up here. Lejet hit to Garza again. And Garza has a second. Garza is killing me. Warren now to Oaks. Let's see if we can get back into this thing. Fabricio Oya up to Warren. Warren drops it back to Oya. He puts it, gives it right back to Warren. Little give and go there. Uh, Warren's cross is deflected out. That'll be a corner. Oya to take the corner. He goes far post with it. Keeper punches it away. Donsa out to Jolly. Jolly over to Chan. Back to Warren. Up to Oya. Nice one-touch pass to Oaks. Shot is wide. Here's Oya again. Puts it far post. Cincinnati heads it down. Ooh, Galkin's shot is over the bar. Ayasaka takes the goal kick. Cincinnati now nursing a two-goal lead. Ayasaka sends it long. Joseph Nielsen gathers it. He plays it over to Ebert. Who goes back to Joseph Nielsen. Fight, uh, Joseph Nielsen fights off a challenge. And now we've got an attack down the right. Joseph Nielsen drops it. To Donsa. Galkin's shot is... Oh, he was offside. <laughs> I was like, why did the keeper just watch it go in? Okay, so we made one little tactical change after Cincinnati scored their second goal, but we are still not, um, we've not been able to find a goal. So we're down 2 nothing. We've got to make something happen this half. Second half, here we go. Jet plays it up, but Cincinnati player New is off. Here's Joseph Nielsen with the throw. Donson, the jolly. Jolly to Oya. Ball is headed out. 
And here comes Garza. Garza now attacking again from the wing. He has been killing us all day, but his shot is off target. And now Cincinnati with the corner. He's headed down. Fryby to Tajuri Sharp Shradi. And Fryby has it back now. He takes it to a dangerous spot. And Garza's one touch shot is deflected out for a corner. And Rangel picks out that corner kick. And we're going the other way, hopefully. Yes, a wide open Galkin has it, but he just drops it back to Donsa. And we have a counter. But Donsa holds it too long. And here comes Garza looking for his hat trick. So he gives up a corner. Or no, a goal kick. And here's Rengel out to Bear. Plays it up, but right winger can't get there. And here comes Garza again, but we dispossess Garza. Here goes Oya now. He plays it out to Galkin. Galkin, he's going to have a shot. And we've got a goal. It's 2-1 to one in the 67th minute. We've got about 23 minutes to equalize. Oya here plays it to Galkin. And as you can see, Cincinnati was was all sixes and sevens and then Galkin finishes to make it two to one try and salvage something from this match all right here's Chan with the free kick he plays it up to Galkin Galkin lays it up for Perez Perez drops to Galkin Galkin goes far post oh Vitor ja, Vitor could not finish but he does collect the rebound but Cincinnati takes it away And now here's Cincinnati. They give the ball away on a bad pass. Donsa plays it up to Galkin. Galkin into the area. Crosses far post. There's Vitor. Oh, but his shot deflects out for a corner. Hayasaka now goes long on the goal kick. Warren wins it. Plays it up to Adilson. Adilson plays it through for Jolly. Scores! We have an equalizer. It's 2-2 two two in the 87th minute. It looks like we may be able to salvage a point from, from this match after falling down 2 to nothing in the first few minutes. Adilson here takes on the defender and then lays a perfect through ball to Jolly, who coolly slots it through the, uh, the goalkeeper. And it is 2-2. Two to two. Gross now with the free kick. Keeper saves it out, but Adilson leaves it for a goal kick. Hayasaka now sends it. Watson for Cincinnati plays it up. Jolly, who's playing with a yellow, and I did not lower his tackling. <laughs> a little risky, but I don't, I, at this point, I, we need the ball. Warren heads it up to Javitor, who drops it to Chan. Chan goes up looking for a Dielsen, but he couldn't get there. Trying to put Cincinnati under a little pressure in the back. Keeper goes long, but we pick it up. Ebert plays it up. He finds Galkin. He leaves it for Perez. Perez crosses to Donsa. Donsa to Jolly in the middle. And we have a third goal! We are up 3-2 to two in stoppage time. Another well-worked goal here. Galkin has it against the right back. We play a two-on-one uh, with Perez. He gives it to Donsa, who drops it to Jolly, who gets his brace and what could be the winning goal. All right, we're in the sixth minute of the fifth minute of stoppage. Cincinnati switches over to Keene, and that is it! What an epic comeback. Oh, that's, that's why you don't give up on matches, boys and girls. Uh, it, looked like, it looked like we were dead in the water after Alberto Garza absolutely pwned us, using an old... <laughs> An old mid 2000s term. <laughs> probably, nobody probably says that anymore. But Garza shredded us. He tore us up in the first 20 minutes of the match. So now I'm playing from behind. We go into the half down two to nothing. Made a couple little changes. Abakar Galkin scores in the 68th. Then Steve Jolly says, You know what, guys, get on my back. I'll carry us to the three points. And we get a huge come from behind win. Playing a patchwork squad against FC Cincinnati, that then this that's a big result. What a way to start the season. That's 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 how you start a season. 
Uh, great win for the guys. All right, what an epic, epic result. Uh, I'm, I'm excited right now. That was, uh, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> you have a nice, and really, Steve Jolly, he's not a terrible player, but he's not the guy that you'd expect to be the hero in that situation. I, I, his, his long shots are a 10, you know, and that, I mean, that's okay. His finishing is a 7, but I tell you what, look at his composure, 14, decisions, 13. I mean, obviously those are not outstanding, but at this level, those are pretty good. And that certainly is what carried us to the win today. He also, his technique is 16. His first touch is 16. So Steve Jolly is the hero, the, uh, the Jolly Giant for, for the day. So this is Uncle Sam FM. Uh, we'll look we'll look ahead real quick just to decide where we're going to try and come back. Um, who knows, to be honest. I'll play and see how far I get. You know, maybe if we get to the deep into the Champions League. Uh, we'll look at that final. But I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I'll see you next time.